Okay, so what I have here is a disassembled power head from a 1975 Mercury 7.5 horsepower. And I acquired this engine for about $150 and they sold it as parts only, but I decided to uh, see if I could get it working. And in fact, I was able to start it. Um, I was able to uh, squirt some starting fluid into the uh, into the carburetor after I cleaned the carburetor. I took the carburetor out. The, the jets were clogged. There had been some gas left in there. Uh, I cleaned the carburetor out. I uh, checked the ignition system. It had a new, a relatively new CDI uh, control box. which you see here. And uh, that checked out okay. And the coils, which I'm going to show you here, the coils were okay, but the interface between the coil and the ground had a lot of uh, corrosion because the back of this coil has to be grounded to, uh, to, the, uh, to the engine because the the other wire for the secondary side it has to be connected to ground and there was corrosion and I also discovered which you can't see here that the little skinny wire coming out of the back of the coil that's supposed to attach to the uh, not attach but be pressed against the engine block was disconnected corroded from the coil so I went in and I dug out around the wire and I, I exposed about an eighth of an inch of the wire coming out of the coil and I soldered onto it and I got it working. So both coils, if you measure from the uh, from the secondary, the spark plug wire to ground, now measure about 1100 ohms and the coil across the, pri the, the primary across the uh, plus and minus terminals uh, measures out at um, approximately point, uh, point 0.2 ohms. So the, the coils are in good shape. And everything else looked okay. The stators, uh, here's the stators. The stators checked out okay. Uh, no, no broken wires, no, uh, no evidence of, uh, of the flywheel hitting the, the stators, the pickup coil, uh, where's the pickup coil? Pickup coil's on the other unit. Pickup coil, pickup coil is okay. And uh, like I said, I was able to start the engine and it, it ran fine and I actually took it out on, on a lake and um, ran it for a little bit and it seemed to be okay. However, I couldn't start it. I had a very difficult time starting it without, uh, without uh, putting starting fluid in there. So I decided to investigate what the issue was. And I got online and I discovered, I'm an engineer but I'm not an expert in outboards, I discovered that a two-stroke crankcase has got to be completely sealed from the outside, pressurized. So I made some adapters to close off the exhaust area of the uh, of the engine. And I made an adapter that allows me to screw in a small pressure gauge into the where the carburetor goes and I sealed off the uh, telltale where the water comes out because it's all, when you close off the bottom of the engine, it's also part of the, uh, the cooling system, but that's just, in, that's just incidental. So I sealed all that off and I pressurized it and I discovered several things. I discovered that this O-ring on the uh, top bearing holder was leaking like a sieve and I discovered 
And there's also a seal right in here. This is the this is the top seal. And I discovered that uh, it was leaking a little bit, but not very much. But I discovered that the bottom seal, and this is the, the I've taken the cover off of the crankcase. The, the pistons go down into here, and this cover right here goes right on top of here, and that, that forms the crankcase. There's about eight bolts that do that. So after I pressurized it, I found out that this seal here on the top, was leaking, leaking like a sieve. This is probably the original 1975 mercury seal and it's hard and uh, it was leaking. So I had leaks here at the top seal, I had leaks at the bottom seal, the head gasket was okay. Uh, everything else, the, the port covers were okay. So the only place was leaking top and bottom seals. And so I've got some new seals on order, and uh, I'm going to replace the seals. And I also started to look at the pistons, and I noticed there was a clanking sound, or a slapping sound. And I, would, I noticed that this piston is really, really worn, but the inside of the bore doesn't seem to be too bad. So I happen to have a couple extra pistons. If I didn't, I'd probably just smooth these out with some sandpaper and put them back in there. Put some, I'm going to put some new rings on. Also, one of the, the ring on this, uh, so, uh, this piston was broken. So uh, this had scoring and this had broken ring, but it, it, I still got 120 PSI of, uh, of compression. So uh, the bore seems to be okay. I'm going to get a two inch flex hone and I'm going to uh, hone out the bore. I don't know if you can, you can see in here, but the, the bore is really not too bad. And I'm going to put the new pistons on, and I'm going to uh, put it all back together. But then I started looking at, at the reed block. This is the reed block, right here. And there are eight reeds, and the way a two-stroke works is the air is sucked in from the carburetor when the pistons are on the upstroke, and it goes through the reed block and out these one-way valves. And when the pistons come on the downstroke, it pressurizes the crankcase and blows the mixture that's floating around in the crankcase through the ports on the side of the cylinders and as the piston comes up the spark plug fires and it ignites and gives it power. But the reeds, even though you can't see in this in the video here, but four of the reeds are about half the thickness of a credit card away from the reed body. And I'm pretty sure that that, along with the uh, leaking of the cylinders, or leaking of the top seals, is what's causing my hard starting problem. Because the valves are supposed to be totally closed, so when, those, when the piston comes down, no air goes back through the carburetor and comes out. If it does, it... it, it, it upsets the system. It causes a, a lean out on the, uh, on the engine and uh, it's maybe what caused the, the uh, pistons to, uh, to gall. I'm not really sure. So I'm going to disassemble the reed, reed body and these reeds are stainless steel. However, all the modern two-stroke engines like motorcycles and snowmobiles, they use carbon fiber reeds, which are available from uh, a company called um, Boysden, B-O-Y-S-D-O-N or something like that. Anyway, for 50 bucks, I ordered a set of carbon fiber reeds. 
So this engine is going to be totally high tech when I'm done. And I'm hoping to, when I get this thing back together, and I'll of course do another video on, on that, assembling it, uh, I think we will find that this thing will probably guaranteed start on the first or second pull every time. Because right now you can't get it started to save your life. And I'm sure it's because, well I'm positive it's because of the leaking seals and I'm pretty sure the reeds are instrumental in, in uh, the hard starting problem. Once it gets going it doesn't make any difference but when you're only rotating the engine a couple RPM a little bit of air getting past these reeds and going back into the carburetor can make a big difference in, uh, in the mixture uh, getting into the cylinders on the, uh, on the downstroke of the, of the pistons. Or, yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, that's where I am right now. I've got some parts ordered and I will keep an update. This is a Mercury 1975 7.5 horsepower. It, uh, this video is also applicable to the 110 or, or 9.8 uh, horsepower version. They're practically the same engine except for carburetor jetting and uh, the size of the, of the ports uh, on the side of the block. These are much smaller part ports when you go a larger jet and you put larger ports you can get more air through air and fuel in it and it'll just turn more RPMs. I, I believe that is the the difference between uh, a 9.8 and a 7.5 according to my research. So it looks like a mess but these engines are really simple and if you troubleshoot them correctly I think I can bring this thing back to almost factory condition. Thanks for watching. This is Renaissance Al signing off.